Hello, good day and welcome back. So today we're going to continue working on implementing the IO writer. This time we're going to implement a byte write counter instead of a write counter. So all that means is that every time we send some bytes to the write counter, to our um, implementation of the um, IO writer, we'll count how many bytes was sent to it. Now this might seem pretty trivial and contrived, but it actually is a real thing that comes in a lot in some of your program, even the previous one where you had to just keep count of in many writes. Years ago, when I worked on some embedded code, some of the things you had to do was keep count of how many packets you received, and then also keep count of how many bytes you've received in total. And so you can offer up this metrics to say that oh, you've received these many packets, you received these many bytes, because the person who's sending on the other side if they can also do the same thing, you can use this information from both ends to see if there were drop packets or something or bytes or, or bytes being dropped, right? And so you could kind of see where things are going wrong. So this is not as um, trivial as the example might really um, seem to indicate, even though I call them like little trivial or contrived examples, that's because we are not putting them part, as part of a larger program, but do realize that some of these things actually um, can be used in bigger program. So let's just get to the, the implementation. And so as usual, we're going to start with our previous section code example. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And so this is what we're doing. And so we're going to change this now so that we can start doing a um, byte counter um, instead of a write counter. The bytes counter is almost like this, except now what we're going to be adding is the number of bytes. So it seems to me that all we really need to do is do the length of P here also. So length of P, and that's going to keep track of our number of bytes. That's our counter. So instead of calculating length multiple times, we could just do length of P here and then just return L here and then you know just add l here and that pretty much gets us um, what we want and so here we have a slice of of bytes of one and then all these were zero so after this call we should expect our bytes counter to have just the single value one and so if we run this It's, it is one. And so if we put here, you know, zero, five, nine, whatever, the, the number of things here, um, and then maybe I do something like this. It doesn't really matter. Um, so we use one, two, yep, we have that. And then um, maybe I do this. And so now, um, here maybe we do something like this equals to um, uh, bar equals to um, byte um, cast some string All right and so um, let's see uh, Let's see if that's going to work. Let me see. Why is there I say semicolon or new line? Uh, okay, let's hope that that's fine. And there we go. And you can see 20. And we could go through and look here. 4 and 3 is 7. And then here, how many that tells you that oh, this is have to be 13. So we could go through and count it up and make sure that oh, it's 13. But that's giving us a count of our bytes. So again, pretty straightforward. Now, for your exercise, if you like, um, is you should change this so that oh, this is not an integer. So when you pass a pointer to the type here, you don't have to do the dereference. And it's a very, very simple solution. Hint, just change it from a basic type to a struct that contains an int. And then now when you do a pointer here, you don't have to dereference. Very easy solution. You can apply to this and the previous example. Thanks for your time. Continue to practice. Let me know if this is working for you, if there's something I can change. I love the feedback. 
see you in the next video again if you haven't subscribed please do please spread the word take care have a great day